Hi everyone, this is Piyush Ranjan. I'm the founder and chief consultant of Management Masters. We are a boutique admissions consulting firm for the top MBA programs around the world. Today we have with us Lavish. Lavish worked with us to apply for some of the top schools around the world and currently he is at INSEAD. Uh, he has just joined the January session. So welcome Lavish. It's great to have you here. Great to talk to you after a long, long time. Uh, before we get started with the interview, could you just give us a brief introduction about yourself? Where, what did you do? And uh, how are you feeling, you know, while you are in India now? Thanks, Piyush. Uh, first of all, it's always been fun to talk to you. So thanks for inviting me. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Uh, getting back to your question, uh, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm really excited about, uh, you know, like I have just started a couple of weeks back. So I'm excited to meet a lot of new people and really get into the groove of the MBA for which I've been preparing for such a long time. So it's, it's amazing to see that it's happening and it, it is uh, uh, as as great as I had thought about it. So, but to give a sense of uh, where I'm coming from, I come from a business family in India. Uh, I was born and raised in Kanpur and I did my schooling there. And uh, then I moved to Delhi for doing my undergrad. And, you know, as, as I was doing my undergrad, ending my undergrad, I basically got an opportunity to work with a bank in Middle East and I latched on to that opportunity uh, and and yeah this was eight years back and in the past eight years I've worked in different countries in the Middle East uh, as I said I started with banking and then I moved to uh, I switched to a ride hill startup working in technology uh, from a functional sense I, I started in the analytics function so I started uh, as an analyst in the analytics function and then uh, in my latest role I was beyond analytics I was also managing uh, digital transformation and innovation uh, for for my unit. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, in terms of uh, my career, a lot uh, of it has been uh, about you know being in a global setting, uh, and I've got opportunities to work with uh, uh, global teams, culturally diverse teams, and that was a key theme and a key motivator in in my career. And as I was looking for uh, the MBA program, this was again uh, one of the things that I wanted a global career. And and this is where the business school really came in, and that's how I started thinking about it. Makes sense. Thank you so much for that, uh, you know, intro. But a very very quick question that I have is: you almost had like eight to nine years of experience before you started applying, and you were already in a kind of mid senior level position, right? Uh, so so what really motivated you to apply for an MBA program? What what were you expecting from the MBA program at this juncture of your career? Yeah, so I mean, having got an opportunity to work for eight years, and and that's not only long, but also get got an opportunity to work uh, in the technology space, which was growing uh, at a tremendous pace. Uh, a lot of uh, real business, practical business problems I had seen uh, how they work and how to go around them. The motivation for MBA really came in from two perspectives. Uh, as I was getting more into more senior roles, I realized that I need a bit more uh, diverse geographic experience. Uh, and also I needed to tap uh, onto a, a, a solid network. And you cannot underscore uh, how great the networks of some of these business schools are. Uh, just to give you context, in just last couple, I've just started a couple of weeks back and uh, I was doing... Uh, research for a particular industry in a particular geography. Uh, you know, it, I, I felt amazed with with uh, how many people were working from the same uh, cohort in, in the same industry. And it was just about, you know, reaching out to them, talking about them, and people were super kind to share their experiences with you. So I would say for me specifically, the why the MBA came uh, around was, as I said, uh, getting more cultural and geographical experience uh, to to build on my global career and then uh, also the network that the schools bring in. That makes, makes a lot of sense. So, you know, uh, given again that you were in a quite a senior position while you were, right, obviously the first thing when it comes to mind when you start thinking about an MBA program is, you know, the, the tests, the GMAT, the GRE prep and things like these. So, how difficult or easy was it for you to prepare for GMAT? And, you know, what allowed you to get the kind of scores that you were able to get while sort of working full-time in a very demanding role that you had? Could you tell us a bit about that? 
yeah i mean if i had to really summarize it you have to i'll say just have the patience <laughs> because it is a long journey uh, if you remember pyush when i had come to you i did not necessarily have the gmat but we wanted to still go ahead with the journey and you were kind enough to uh, uh, come along the way and and work on application i'll touch upon the application process in a bit but yeah uh, i mean as you are working uh, it it becomes very important that you you become disciplined uh, about uh, the gmat thing Uh, there is no alternative to it uh, i i've seen people talk to me about uh, as they come for guidance talk to me about the fact that hey okay, now there have been some opportunities to skip gmat especially post covid uh, should we really do it uh, my answer to them always is that you know that's a good data point that the school will can review about you so it's it's better to have a gmat score uh, and and most people do it with uh, with with a demanding job i had a demanding job so i was working uh, in in a startup and we were expanding especially post covid uh, when when i really started my journey of of thinking about the mba school and gmat uh, yeah it was very demanding time we were we were launching new businesses we were uh, expanding into new cities we were pivoting uh, because covid was forcing us to pivot uh, in that to find time i of course was hard but it was not necessarily impossible i think what really worked for me was i i told myself that i will give x number of hours every week and then i ensured that i gave x numbers of hours and whether it meant i am distributing it across seven days or doing it on uh, in one day one day and and getting it done so but but yeah it's very important to do it and and uh, actually working side by side and and then giving gmat also i feel uh, brought a certain sense of discipline because my days were structured and and it really helped me you know focus okay this is my uh, time that i need to really focus on so i hope that answers the question absolutely absolutely it helps quite a lot right because i think you touched upon a very very important aspect of the of the entire prep journey right and that is discipline and it's not just with the gmat right because uh, once you are done with the gmat you will be working on your applications once you are done with your applications you are working on simultaneously you are working on multiple different things including your essays uh your letters of recommendation you have to chase people for your recommendations uh you have to get your resume done you have to finish up multiple multiple essays and probably reiterating them hundreds of times right uh so it's it's a i think i think what you brought up as you know, dis- discipline being a major factor right i think that's one of the most underrated uh but one of the most important aspects of the entire journey because if you don't have that discipline to be able to work on multiple different things and not try to multitask everything at the same time right uh then then it's going to be a very very difficult journey for you right yeah i mean it just adds on i mean as you rightly said i mean there's not only gmat there are applications within the applications you have to research about the school you have to talk to some of the alumni is uh, to really get more understanding of the school you have to be always in touch with the admissions committee and and then always also working on your essays and deadlines are such that you are working on more than one uh, we school at a time so just to get that orientation right so there it, it is a lot and if you're not structured disciplined and patient yeah it becomes very 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 hard very fast absolutely makes makes a lot of sense so um, so just to give a brief sort of background of what we worked on we worked on two schools cambridge and insia and we were fortunate enough to get admits from both the schools right uh but could you tell us a bit about how did you to decide uh, which schools did you want to apply to right could you give us a bit about the thought process that you followed in choosing these schools and why not some of the other top schools around the world or us based schools uh could you just tell us a bit about that yeah i mean that's a very good question and uh, if you remember some of our initial conversations and this is also part of your eight step process right uh, the initial sessions really focus on understanding yourself uh really thinking about your differentiators where 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 are you coming from where you really want to go and i think that understanding was extremely important uh, for me to hey here here is who i am uh, this is my inclination these are the regions that i want to really go go to and and then all of that goes in and then you start figuring out okay this is what i'm uh, this is what i can see from a region and and a school perspective and then also not to underscore the importance of schools and the different cultures that they bring uh, each school is nuanced i mean of course all of the all uh, top b schools will give you an impeccable management degree but then each school is 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 slightly differentiated in terms of their culture their value sets the kind of student profiles they are looking for 
and and to then really fit uh, what you are trying to get out of this and then matching that with the school is 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 the is a very critical process uh, and and we realized that right when we were working together so yeah that that's that's how basically uh, i zeroed in on these two schools because uh, i had a technology inclination uh, to my pre as well as my post career uh, motivation so yeah the technology inclination brought me to these two particular schools and and uh, also uh, i wanted to be in europe as a geography uh, post my mba so uh, again uh, i was focusing more on europe schools uh, in in that context so that helped me from a b school perspective but yeah as i said uh, one should not really underscore uh, understanding your profile as well as connecting it to the b school and the research that it takes and that's where i really thought that your as i said the eight step process really brought structure and brought clarity to to what we were doing and then you know in all of that chaos it it brought some clarity yeah absolutely now uh, both of these schools whether it's cambridge whether it's insiad right they come with a tremendously huge application right so just within these two schools i think we cover probably 10 schools uh, worth of applications or essays that we have to write right uh how did you go about the essay process how did you go about thinking about you know which experiences you wanted to talk about or how did you want to put them on paper would you tell us a bit about uh, how did that go for you yeah so so as i walked into this process uh, of course i knew uh, that there are some experiences that i really feel passionate about and they really connect to my uh, future aspirations as well and i really wanted to talk about them and and i went with that preconceived notion uh, but what also uh additional data points that i got uh, was if you remember we did a, a key differentiator exercise uh, among us to really then think about hey yes you're com- coming with certain preconceived notions about the the experiences that you want to talk about because you feel so passionate about them uh but then uh here are a few things you should also think about because those kind of elements do come around in as you're going deep into essays so the key differentiator exercise really helped me uh Uh, without any biasness think about uh, in in a very logical and in and in a pragmatic way here are some of the transferable experiences that i have had which can then cut across different industries uh, and yeah that that was the initial bit where i kind of brought in a lot of elements but as you know like uh, these 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 things really help uh, on on the professional essays and and background essays but then when it comes to personal motivation essays yeah then it was a completely different ball game if you remember uh, we actually uh, waited for we actually did not apply to r1 of ncad and we waited for one more round because we said hey we are not getting getting to really express what we want to express and and you were patient enough to 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 be throughout that journey <laughs> and 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 yeah, I mean, the the, the way the personal motivation essay or the kind of person that you are essay, right? For Insia, that came out. Yeah. Right? Absolutely love that essay, right? Because you, it was written from the heart, and I don't think we had even covered those aspects that came into the essay in our sessions previously, right? Absolutely, the, absolutely. Very detailed, very personal account of who you are as a person, and and uh, I think I think that that made a lot of sense. so and in that sense it's, it's a journey right essay writing uh, is a journey where you walk in with a few things then you build on top of that but then as different uh, essays come around especially which are more personal in nature you're also discovering a lot of uh, reflecting and discovering about yourself uh, and and you know putting that into words really uh, you you are forced to think about the motivations in a real sense and and uh that was i felt it was a really amazing journey i mean i know there were days when when we really did not like our essays and i would always come to you hey if you wish i know this version is there but why don't you see another version that i prepared and, and you were kind enough to go through all of them and you know uh, help me it always makes sense right because uh, there there's only so much that you can cover in one essay right and when you're looking at another res- version of the essay which has been written with a different viewpoint there could be some things that we might find which are more interesting right yeah. and which we can take up that particular new version completely or we could just incorporate those elements into the current essay it's always it's always an evolutionary process right it's not a yeah. stagnant process that okay this is what we have done and this is it right just as a look like that so a very very quick question regarding this right because we are very very sort of young and not very popular we are not 
like the biggest names in the in the industry. How did you come to work with us? How, why did you decide to work with us uh, for your MBA applications? Could you, could you shed some light on that? Yeah. So I had already uh, gotten to know about you through a colleague. Uh, so so that's how I first came across your name. Uh, at the time, I was not necessarily looking to do an MBA. Uh, I knew that I wanted to, but yeah, I mean, it, the, the name registered. And then when I started thinking about, hey, now now I think it's the right time to do the MBA uh, and apply for uh, these schools, as I started looking at the application process, and we have talked about this, that it's a lot. It's a lot of elements. And and from very early on, I knew that, hey, I would rather take support on this because I was also working and and finding time. I would have limited time and I wanted to be really focused. Uh, so that's when I reached out to you. Uh, I remember our first conversation and I think our first conversation was very instrumental in terms of uh, all, not only us working together, but also in terms of the the relationship that we had uh, as, as we worked on the application. And I remember in, in, in that particular uh, call that I had with you, it was sometime in July, June, July, and uh, we we were talking about i was sharing my motivations of the for doing the mba my background and and where i want to go and while you validated uh, a bunch of things that i was thinking you also challenged a few so so that uh, really helped set the tone uh, and that's exactly what i was looking for right i mean uh, someone who can validate some some of my experiences really understand and empathize with them and and help me bring them in, in the best way possible but also challenge some of my notions uh, because that's very important and and it's more of a brainstorming thing that that uh, we did together and uh, it's not like you just uh, it, it's a one off thing that you did uh, I remember this theme continuing across the the process, there. and and especially like uh, as we went through, you know, finding the B schools, the differentiators, CV, um, the essays. So everything had an element of you know sitting together with someone, brainstorming. Here is what I bring on the table. Uh, this is what I think is 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 transferable. You basically coming from your experience and saying that hey, this works well. This I've seen has worked well, and and so on and so forth. And and other element that I want to talk about you is that you know as I was researching about uh, B schools, one another thing that really helped were your connects, uh, having having uh, guided a lot of uh, previous students, uh, and and as I reached out to them to to understand, and and they're already in 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 some of the top B schools, and I when I was reaching out to them, they were super kind. And and they were super super open about sharing their experiences. So I also need to thank you for for making and get in touch with them. That's very kind of you. Yeah. So what would you say? One thing that worked very well for you. What maybe let's take this as a feedback for us, right? What did we do well uh, while we worked together? And one thing that you would want us to further improve upon uh, as we sort of move ahead with other candidates. Yeah, so I, I think one thing that really worked well was the the structure that you brought on the table. Uh, as I said, it, it becomes uh, very complex very fast. So the structure certainly uh, helped. And and then also couple that with the fact that uh, you were always available and, and with your experience, you were able to connect my experience and really help me brainstorm and put forward uh, my best profile. Um, and and you were honest as well, right? You you were the one who told me that hey, uh, while we are, uh, while I was like super into pushing for round one, you told me that we are not like super ready right now. So I think just to hear those kind of feedbacks along the way is is, is super uh, cool and 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 that really helps shape your application. I think for uh, improvement, I really think uh, you, you guys do a lot of things good. And it's something that you were kind enough to do for me. I know you. you we started the journey with with my GMAT not being there, and we started it out. But it was super complex. So I think, yeah, I mean, uh, one advice to anyone would be that get your GMAT done first before getting into the application journey because you're just not sure. You're not able to really pin down on the schools you want, and that really takes on from the process. So I think that that's something. Uh, I think the the GMAT thing. The reason why we have like a. Uh, I think we do that sometimes, right? When we see the candidates, and also in your case, you had a GMAT four in hand, right? So it was not like we did not have anything to work, with, but we had something. 
but the GMAT thing is something which is very critical, right? We, we get a lot of inquiries from very brilliant candidates sometimes, right? Uh, who have done everything, but they don't have the GMAT course in hand. And uh, from our experience previously, right, we have been in situations which are very, very difficult because you have prepared your entire application. You have spent months on sort of you know, figuring out your schools, connecting with people, building out your essays, getting your recommendations, finishing up the entire application with the exception of that GMAT score. And then when you take the GMAT, it turns out that you have not scored the score that you actually wanted. Right? Everything was going well until mocks we are getting a 747, 50, 747, 50. You go to the test day and you end up with a 7 or a 7, which is just not enough for the kind of schools that maybe you are targeting. And then the entire work that the candidate has done, right? it just goes to waste, kind of. And it's it's not just about the work being wasted, it sort of affects the morale of the candidate so heavily, right? Um, and to avoid that situation, essentially what we introduced was if you don't have a GMAT score, it's very difficult for us to sort of begin with the process because, you know, at the end of the day, I've already done my MBA, master's, whatever it is. The candidate is the one who's going to sort of reap the benefits or the negatives of whatever happens. So it's going to affect their careers much more than what it is going to affect me. So that was the thought process which sort of told us to have a very hard stop here. Like if you don't have a GMAT, we don't want to work together. We would love to work together if we have it. But uh, I think in your case, what we had was we had an initial preliminary yeah. GMAT score, which was good enough to apply to the kind of schools that we were still looking at. Uh, and then obviously you wanted to further improve upon that. And we were fortunate. But, but yeah, I mean, having gone through the process myself, uh, I totally agree with you because uh, it becomes a lot. Uh, and then in, in those, and there will be moments when the application deadline is on top of you, the schools, you're still working on the scores as well as on the application. In that moment, it's it just becomes too complex uh, and, and very very uh, intensive. Uh, it's better to have it out of the way. Uh, all best for everyone then. Now I, I have very few questions, but going to be very very sort of fun kind of questions. We call this the rapid fire now. Kind of, it does not need to be very short answers. You can expand on some of them, but most of these questions are going to be quite fun. So the first question that I have for you is why did you leave Cambridge for NCR? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I was looking more for a Europe geography and then also the fact that I was working in Dubai uh, for my last role and NCR had a much bigger network there. So I thought there was a multiplier effect uh, for, for me particularly. Uh, Cambridge was also amazing because I think the tech orientation of Cambridge is is, is impeccable. Uh, but yeah, I mean, for those reasons, in Seattle was my choice. Absolutely. What was the biggest challenge that you faced in your MBA application journey? I think the biggest challenge for me was, uh, you know, like the how to manage the entire thing uh, because. Uh, and we touched upon it. It, it becomes uh, quite intensive. Uh, I remember early January last year when I was about to appear for my GMAT. And then uh, also we were working on applications uh, by, by side. I mean, yeah, I mean, that that was, uh, it could have gone either way, right? Uh, so, so I remember, yeah. I think you, you we, we got the final GMAT score like three or four days before the deadline for our tour, right? Yeah. Cambridge. Right. So. I mean, yeah, although we had thought that we'll apply with the other score, but yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, still a lot riding on, on the score. So, yeah. Now, what would you say is the biggest myth that floats around the MBA admissions process? Right, that you have realized now that you have gone through the process and you're you're starting your MBA journey. I think there are two things. First and foremost, touching on GMAT again, it's like if you have a good score, it's not everything. Uh, you need much beyond that. I've seen situations where people with great scores have not made it uh, to their target schools, and people with uh, I would say 
decent scores have made it because they just had a strong profile. So I think uh, to think that the profile is is not important, GMAT is the only thing. It would be uh, would be certainly wrong. Uh, another myth which I felt and and we did not necessarily talk about today, but uh, if you remember that I initially when I had come to you, I I my, one of my question was, hey, I don't not necessarily have a, a really good cool NGO experience. Uh, now what do I do about it? <laughs> And and I remember you telling me that hey it's fine I mean we'll talk about it but uh, we'll put what you have and uh, as we reflected deeply and this is one of the things that I really liked about working with you uh, it's about also seeing things from a different perspective we all have uh, some experience that is beyond our work where we have contributed to the larger society around us and and we talked about it and and we brought in those elements in in the profile. Also, we brought in elements about my personal inclinations. Uh, so, so in in some of the co-curricular ones, we we talked about some some really personal things that I uh, focus and follow on. So, you know, it's it's about uh, really understanding deeply where you are. So, I would say, yeah, the NGO experience would be another one. Makes makes sense. Uh, one thing about INSEA that you are super super excited about. Oh well, I mean, beyond the parties. <laughs> I'm really excited about you know, meeting meeting some really cool people. Uh, in just last two weeks, I've met people from, uh, yeah, tip ninety geographies. Um, but but it really feels and and by the way, I'm I'm someone who has worked in a multicultural setting before. I was working in Dubai and 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 I used to work with teams where people were coming from different geographies. But this is next level. Uh, just to know their experiences, just to talk to them, just to understand what they have worked on, what are their personal motivations, and and you get a really you get a sense of really diverse uh, view and and. I, I actually have a follow up question here, right? Because when people are on the outside and they talk about diversity, right? That diversity usually comes from the perspective that people are coming from different backgrounds, right? Um. How would you define, based on what you've seen at NCR over the last two weeks, right? Uh, what do you think how B schools define diversity, or what do you find actually at the B schools in terms of diversity? See, uh, of course, there are elements that people are coming from different geographies. There are elements that people are coming from different industries. But when you sit in a class, or when you are really thinking about uh, talking about, for example, different topics such as entrepreneurship, so on and so forth. I think diversity of thought uh, really becomes important, uh, and uh, I mean I'm I'm going through this now and experiencing it, and I'm amazed by how differently people think about things, and and that is a function of their experience, of course. And uh, in in our class, we can really get to like broad set of uh, outcomes and broad set of ideas while approaching anything and. And that is an amazing uh, starting point if you if you are doing anything. Uh, and I touched upon it as well that I wanted to understand about a particular industry in a particular geography, and uh, it was so easy for me to find people from from those different uh, backgrounds. And they not only gave me a, a consultant sense, they not only gave, but they also gave me hey a sense of of a startup founder, a sense of a person who has worked. Uh, as a bureaucrat in government, a, a person who has worked uh, as, as, a, as a chef in a particular region. So there is that variance in, in terms of the thought process and, and how people really put forward based on their experiences. All right, makes, makes a lot of sense. So I'll have the last question for you now. We have talked about the most challenging aspects of the MBA application or the biggest myths, but one thing that you absolutely loved about the entire MBA application process. What would that? Be? I just loved uh, writing essays. I know not everyone does that, but I just found that entire exercise to be extremely reflective, uh, extremely eye-opening, and uh, you know, I I just felt that hey, when when also helped me by the way, uh, think about how I talk about myself. Uh, because if, if you're writing those essays, it, it, it opens your mind in a certain way because you deeply think about those topics, which you typically don't get a chance to do in, when, you, when you are going through the gruelings of your professional life. So, so for sure, I mean, for me, the as I look back, uh, some of my darkest moments were when I was writing the essays. 
uh, hey, this is not coming around here. And, and you know them. <laughs> you were there all throughout. But as I look back, uh, some of the most satisfying moments were when, when you know, hey, I've got this. This is what I exactly wanted to say. This reflects my uh, motivations, my aspirations, my passion. And, and yeah, I've got this. So yeah, that was really great. It was absolutely wonderful talking to you and catching up with you, Lamish. I wish you the best for the year ahead at INSEAD and obviously beyond that. And it's, it was absolutely a pleasure to work with you and to be able to help you in this journey. Right. So wish you the best. Have a very happy new year. And hopefully you make it out of INSEAD non toxic from the party. <laughs> Thank you, Pushan. Like wishing you and Management Masters the best for the years to come. <laughs>